We've got here the first prototype uh, GT300 LC engine, which is uh, built on a specially converted GT casing. And it's running a 64 stroke crank uh, and a 76 millimeter bore on a CDU. Uh, the cylinder is a 1995 to 1998 uh, CDU 580 or 587 uh, jet ski engine. Uh, it's also common to other types of uh, Rotax on Bombardier cylinders uh, and snowmobile engines. Uh, it's a die cast engine with an iron liner. Its port timings are 125 degrees transfer and uh, 182 uh, exhaust or there or thereabouts. Um, the liners are replaceable. Uh, they come as standard as 76 mil bore, but a lot of them are overboard to 77. Um, and we're running that with a uh, 125 millimeter rod on a 64 stroke crank. The original heads are um, are a twin head, so unlike the cylinders which are separate, the heads the heads then bolt the two together. So we have a couple of options if you're doing conversions. You take an original head, you chop it in half and you do lots of welding and fabrication and you live with a very large uh, thermostat housing or you can CNC machine a head from standard. And we elected to CNC machine a head from billet and that's what we have here. So it goes together in the traditional way. It's bolted down with six M6 bolts through the head and then the skull cap is secured with six M6 um, dome head sockets. It has the recesses for o-ring seals rather than gaskets, temperature sensor and then screw in bosses for the uh, for the plumbing and a drain hole. It would be nice to produce this as a as a production engine uh, and in order to make that benefit beneficial really we need to be sort of hitting a brake horsepower of the mid 30s to to give it a good potential elsewhere so we always build engines that are, are built for the road they're built for touring they're not uh, optimized for uh, for absolute the, the maximum because that's taking a little bit beyond the you know the realms of the reliability issue so well, I'd prefer to leave that for uh, racers to develop but if we can produce a solid engine that is is powerful and reliable in the in the in the mid 30s or the slightly low 30s then uh, we've achieved a goal and the platform for which racers and and tuners can work on to build a casing like this previously you probably would have been looking at two thousand pounds just in the um, just in the welding work and the fabrication work alone. The, co the cost of this type of modified casing isn't going to be massively more than than the standard uh, um, Gran Turismo cases. Um, by that, essentially, once the programs are done, the machining operations are the same. The only uh, the only additions to that are things like there'll be a low volume cast inlet manifold, there has to be a CNC uh, machined uh, reed valve um, housing that goes on as well. So those will be additional costs but it's not massively prohibitive and in, in the scheme of things it's, it's exceptionally good value for, for what you get out of it. In terms of cost we really are not 100% sure at the moment just the practicalities of building this type of engine like the you know the wiring looms the ignitions um, the the radiators and the plumbing this is you know it's all substantially it all adds up it's not as easy as building a, a GT240 or something like that so if if everything works with the following wind we would hope to sort of be expecting something around sort of mid 2018 um, from the point of view of making a production casing. This is the bigger brother, so the original, the, the program was to test the, the smaller cylinders, the 580, 587 first, uh, and then the closest, the next cylinder up in the family is the 787 cylinder. So this is half of a 787, 787 Rotax uh, jet ski engine. This is typically a 150 brake horsepower twin. It is power valved. It's an 82 millimeter bore and a 70, 74 millimeter stroke. 
uh, and we're slightly down on stroke. We're running it on 72 stroke because we're limited. We physically can't get any more into the, into the uh, space that we've got available. So the plan would be to produce a crank where we can reposition the um, crank pin so we can, sw uh, we can easily use the same forgings to go from a 64 stroke crank to a 72 stroke crank. <laughs> Do it with some enthusiasm, I think it's the way to do it.